Today on Timescast, Egyptian police detain and question former President Hosni Mubarak and his two sons. NATO, Arab, and African ministers met with Libyan rebels in Doha. Also in attendance, a controversial defector from Colonel Gaddafi's regime. And rival military factions clash in Yemen. The Egyptian government today announced that they have detained former President Hosni Mubarak and his two sons, Gamal and Allah. It's unclear uh, what this means. Certainly the military is acceding to the demands of the protesters that, they that the military or someone should move against former President Mubarak. It's also possible that the military is trying to scapegoat Mubarak. Most Egyptians uh, who speak publicly uh, say they're only eager for President Mubarak to face trial and justice. <laughs> More privately, uh, many say they're worried. Many people here are accustomed to Mubarak being the head of state for quite a while and would like to see him treated with dignity. And some here still fear, after decades of hearing from President Mubarak, that he was the only thing standing between Egypt and, cha Egypt and chaos that the revolution uh, could lead to more disorder here. The army's role remains somewhat inscrutable. I think most people are still certainly hopeful that the army will guide a transition to democracy. Some people are not as confident of that as they once were because of the force and even torture that the army has applied towards protesters in Tahrir Square over the last month. Certainly none of the main political actors are ready to give up hope at this time. What you're hearing from most of the opposition parties is still the same slogan, the army and the people are one hand. Elsewhere in the region, we learned today that a, a prominent uh, Libyan defector had made another trip to Doha. Musa Kusa, who for years was uh, one of the closest allies to Colonel Muammar al-Qaddafi of Libya, recently defected to Britain, and his defection stunned Libya and the rest of the government there. Now we learn that not only has he defected to Britain and turned against the Qaddafi regime, the British have let him travel to Doha, Qatar, where there is a conference going on to negotiate a possible resolution uh, to the conflict in Libya. It raises a lot of questions. Musakusa has been for many years a very, very close ally of Colonel Qaddafi, uh, even running his foreign intelligence services. He's also someone who the British uh, and American uh, authorities know and may trust uh, because he worked closely with them in trying to build a rapprochement between Libya and the West when Libya turned over its, its nuclear weapons. So he may be going on his own behalf or he may be going as some sort of advocate for Britain and the United States. And in Yemen, rival military factions clashed early Wednesday in the capital of Sana'a. Last night around midnight in, in the capital here, Sana'a, clashes broke out between security forces loyal to President Ali Abdullah Saleh and soldiers belonging to Major General Ali Mohsen Al Ahmar, leaving at least one soldier dead from each side. This is the first time such clashes broke out after General Al Ahmar announced his support for the anti government protest movement here in Yemen and sent his soldiers out on the streets of Sana'a to protect the protesters. Since then, we've had dueling sides of the military on the streets in Sana'a, but it, it's remained relatively peaceful, but last night was the first sign of violence between them. General Al Ahmar is known as the most powerful military commander in Yemen. He commanded the northwestern province of the country, which was engaged in a war, and his soldiers are very established in the country, and he is also from the same tribe as the president and was always considered as an ally of the president. So General Mohsen announcing his support for the anti-government protest movement was a big shock in the country as he broke off from the president. And there still are parts of the military that are loyal to the president. Many of these are commanded by the president's relatives, whether it be his son or his nephews. Clashes between security forces and protesters also broke out this morning in the southern port city, Aden. There are various reports of number killed, anywhere from one to five were killed that I've heard from doctors on the ground in Aden. The security situation, stability in the country continues to 
unravel. What people do think is that some sort of resolution has to be reached quickly, which is what the Gulf Cooperation Council is trying to do, you know, along with support from America and the European Union, trying to figure out where Yemen goes from here because it doesn't seem things are going to get better at the status quo and they're going to continue to unravel. Oh, <laughs>